Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to my comparison between the Canon C200, Panasonic GH5, and the Sony a6500. We're going to take a look at 4K detail, 120 frames per second, 1080p detail, low light, and autofocus. Now, before we get into the test, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Image One Camera located in the LA area, Riverside to be specific. They are the ones who let me borrow their Canon C200 to do a review. So thank you so much to them. Without them, this would not be possible. If you guys are going to buy a C200, a GH5, a6500, or any other cameras or accessories, definitely check out the links in the video description and you can buy from them uh, to support them for making this possible. Like I said, I definitely appreciate it. And they have some of the best customer service I've ever experienced from any camera store. I bought multiple things from them, including my GH5. So thank you guys so much for making this video possible. Now for the autofocus test, which we're going to take a look at first, I use the Canon version 3 51.8 lens with STM. So it's the one that autofocuses as well. Sony's 50mm 1.8 lens, and I use the Olympus 45mm 1.7. Now I tune them so the depth of field is similar. It's not perfect, um, but to get it as fair as possible. And for those of you guys who are going to say, well, why are you using an Olympus lens on the GH5? Well, in our previous autofocusing test, that Olympus lens was one of the fastest autofocusing lens, and it did the best out of a wide variety of lenses that I tested with my GH5 in regards to autofocus. So let's go ahead and take a look at that first. We're gonna start off looking at autofocus, but I do wanna let you guys know that I am editing off of a 5K display. That means that the viewer that I'm seeing right here is pixel for pixel, 100% 4K, which doesn't make a difference for autofocus, but in the detail and the low light test, that does make a difference because I am seeing a true image that represents the cameras uh, properly. Um, now let's go ahead and start off. My son's not super happy starting off here. He wanted to shovel, but I'm making him walk. Uh, so we're making, I'm making sure that all the cameras are in focus, the faces are being tracked, and as soon as he starts moving, the GH5 focuses on the background. Now, the facial tracking on the GH5 works really, really well. I'm going to pause it here for a second. Uh, it knows exactly where his face is, it knows exactly where his eye is, but the autofocus system just isn't tied in well uh, to that. We see that the Sony and the C200 are perfectly in focus, they're tracking him quite well, and uh, it looks like the Sony went out, out of focus slightly and caught right back up maybe a few frames later. And they both look like they're doing a great job. The GH5, on the other hand, went out of focus and it just caught up now. So GH5, it's tracking his face properly, but it's not changing the focus point where the Sony and the C200, uh, the Canon, they're both doing a great job with that dual pixel autofocus on the Canon. And there you go, we have the GH5 catch back up. It's gonna start walking backwards. We're getting some hunting. And they're both doing a fairly good job there, but we're seeing hunting on the GH5. And it back focused earlier than the others. So uh, going forward, I'm gonna just leave the GH5 out of it because the following tests, we're just seeing the same thing. The GH5 is back focusing or it's not keeping up where the other cameras are much more similar. Here, we're gonna, uh, he's starting to walk and he's too far to have the facial recognition enabled. So it's focusing on the background and we're gonna see which camera kicks in first which one recognizes the face first. So you see the Sony here grabbed his face already and focused on his face. The Canon has not yet. And the Sony actually lost focus for a split second there. And when the Canon kicked in and the Sony caught back up, not a huge difference. And they're both, none of them are pulsing on the background or shifting. They're both tracking his face really well. Let's take a look at this next clip here. So he's running forward. Both of them are doing remarkably well, tracking the face and keeping up. Run forward a little bit more. They're both in focus. Just gonna have them shift. So here the Sony decided to stay on him for longer. The Canon uh, went to the background first and then the Sony caught back up. They're both in focus right here. Now he's going to run. We're going to see which one tracks him. So as you see, the, the Sony is actually tracking him as he's running. Let's do this a little bit slower, just frame by frame. So they're both in focus. Now they're both out of focus. The Sony catches back up here. So the Sony is still keeping up. The Canon is still focused where it was and the Canon caught up here. Gonna let him go a little longer. Now the Canon's actually focused on the background 
So it was on him for a little bit, then it focused on the background where the Sony is actually still following him up until, let's see here. Now, so when he ended up turning around, it focused on the background. So quite impressive. Um, Sony's doing a fairly good job. And I've compared the dual pixel to the Sony's, uh, there's phase detection before, and they're very, very similar. In some instances, the Canon system wins, and some the Sony wins. So he's running full speed here. Which one's gonna catch in first? So here you go, we have the Sony caught on. And the Canon takes just a little bit longer, and the Canon shifts a little bit smoother. Now let's take a look at the low light and detail tests. For these ones, I use the Sigma 18-35 1.8 lens on all three cameras, so it's exactly fair. For the low light, I shot at f2.8, and for the detail test, I shot at f5.6. Uh, we're focusing close to infinity, so everything is in focus, so there's no difference between the sensor sizes. So I try to match this up as fair as possible and using, use the lens that's very, very sharp. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So we have the same configuration here with this GH5 on the left, C200 in the middle, A6500 on the right. These are all default settings, and with the Canon, we are shooting with the Rec. 709 preview. They don't have a bunch of picture profiles in that camera. You're shooting either log, or you're shooting Rec. 709. So um, we take a look at these. Uh, here we're at f5.6 focused on the tree, but since it's close to infinity, everything is in focus. What I notice here, even at just the regular, uh, without punching in at all, uh, the Sony is very sharp, the GH5 is very sharp. It's hard to tell a difference um, just looking at it like this. And you can see that the C200 is softer. But we've got to keep in mind it is not applying as much sharpening in camera as the other two are. We're going to punch in here, and here you notice more of a difference. So this is a 1080p crop, and this is why I really like the A6500. If you're delivering in 1080 and you're shooting in 4K, you can crop in uh, a lot more and then you're able to still get a very nice detailed image. So we can see uh, the A6500 is the most detailed falling by the GH5 and then the C200 is much softer than the other two. So here I actually applied some sharpening to the C200 and this is 2.5 the default for Final Cut and here you could tell the image looks crispy. Uh, it brought out some of those details but it's also over sharpened and even though it's over sharpened the image doesn't look nice uh, it does have less detail than both the GH5 and the A6500. Now that is because uh, the A6500 is taking 20 megapixels in oversampling that into 4.3. The GH5 is taking 15 megapixels oversampling it to 8.3 megapixel, which is 4K. The C200 is just a 4K sensor, so 8.3 megapixels, uh, which results in less overall detail. Um, but that is how it works with really any sensors. So this test right here, um, I actually turned the sharpening on both Sony and the Panasonic all the way down. And so this is with the least in-camera sharpening. And even doing that, we see that the A6500 is still taking the lead, the GH5, uh, maybe a little bit less difference than before, but it, uh, it definitely has more detail than the C200. And we're gonna apply sharpening to all of them now. Instead of having it done in camera, we're gonna do it in post. Now, this is not the same application of sharpening. I'm applying 1.5 to the A6500 and 1.5 to the GH5 and two to the C200. I basically just was sharpening the image in the way I would normally if I was um, editing something. You wanna sharpen it to bring out the detail, but don't not over sharpen it to make it look uh, fake and kind of plasticky. In here, um, there's less of a difference than before once we're doing it this way, but we still see that obviously the 20 megapixels going into the 8.3 and the A6500 is more detailed, followed by the GH5 and the C200. Um, the C200 image, I wanna make sure you guys know, it doesn't look soft, it just isn't super detailed like the other sensors that are down sampling it. And uh, this just, if you're, if you're gonna punch in and do 1080p out of 4K with lots of punching in, I do prefer the higher detail, but if you're shooting people, you don't want it to be super detailed, and usually in the cinema, they do not sharpen um, images as much as you would for other purposes. And next, we're gonna take a look at 1080p at 120 frames per second. I did, the GH5 will actually go higher. It'll go up to 180, but it doesn't look very good. Uh, so we're doing 120, which all these cap cameras are capable of. We have some, some, some more snow in the GH5's image, but just pay attention to the background. Uh, so here it is amazing how much detail the GH5 puts out compared to the other cameras.
The GH5 looks like good 1080p, other than a little bit of Mare, where the C200 and the A6500 look like 720p, basically. Uh, the C200 image uh, is clean, though. It's not very detailed. It's very soft, but it's clean, whereas the A6500s has a lot of aliasing, and the tiles um, on this house don't no longer look like tiles. They look like waves. <laughs> so the GH5 is super detailed, both Mare, the C200 is clean, but very soft, and the A6500 has aliasing, and it's quite soft, slightly more detailed than C200. Uh, but the GH5 is doing remarkably well here. Let's punch in. This is 200%, so this is basically 720p um, out of 1080p. And once again, the GH5, we see that Mari, but it's very detailed, and the other two don't look good. So C200 in second place, I would say A6500 in last place. So let's turn out down all the internal sharpening. Um, basically get the same result here. Uh, we still see aliasing on the A6500, uh, but it looks a little bit better because it's not over sharpened. The C200 stays how it was and the GH5 still looks really good. And then here is the last one here, punching in a little bit more, you guys can see that difference. So um, I would definitely choose a GH5 any day for this type of work, as long as you're not shooting uh, roofs or some shirts that are going to pick up the Mari very easily, uh, you're going to get a great image out of that. Now let's take a look at low light. We have the GH5 on the left, C200 in the middle, and A6500 on the right. 1600, they all look clean. We do see noise in the C200 and GH5. It's fairly similar there. And the A6500 is super clean, practically no noise. Going up to 3200, uh, the GH5 definitely bumps up in noise. The C200, slightly more noise than at 1600, but it's fairly close. A6500 is still perfectly clean. The 6500 is very impressive in low light, as most of you guys know. At 6400, the C200's noise kicks up. It's definitely still usable, whereas the GH5, you guys can see that color shift, a lot more noise, and I would not want to use it at 6400. I think 3200 is the max for that camera. Jumping up to 12,800 ISO, we do see some noise on the A6500 now, but there's a huge difference compared to uh, the GH5. The GH5 is completely unusable. You guys see that color shift, the crazy amount of noise. Uh, the C200, I say I would not want to use it at 1,200 to 800 ISO. Of course, it's better than GH5, uh, but this is where we start getting uh, some of that color noise in and quite a bit of that uh, pattern noise as well. Um, so I would not want to use it there, whereas this A6500 is still definitely usable at 12,800 ISO. So I'm going to pause it here. Uh, you guys can see the difference between the images. Um, the A6500 looks detailed, and the noise is very fine, and the image looks good, and you guys can see the other two for yourselves. One thing I do want to point out is the dynamic range in the C200. Uh, we're seeing more in kind of the mids and also in the highlights you see all those rails um, on that building in the middle, whereas the other two cameras blow out some of those highlights, which has been something I've been really impressed with. Uh, the C200 is the dynamic range. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can post those below. If you guys want to see our full C200 review, you guys can subscribe to the channel. And those of you guys who already subscribed, make sure to enable those notifications so you guys don't miss out on the video. If you guys want to see this video without YouTube's compression, you guys could do so on our Patreon page by supporting us for as little as $1 a month. And that helps us keep doing what we're doing here. So thank you. We definitely appreciate it. And along with that, a big shout out once again to Image One Camera for making this video possible by loaning us the C200. We're going to have links to uh, all the products in the video description below so definitely go check them out and support them as well thank you guys and i will see you in the c200 review